All right, guys, what's going on? It's Jack, and welcome back to another video. And we have another update from Mark Rubin on X Defiant. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been kind of been noticing a pattern in terms of when, how often we get an update from Mark Rubin. And it seems like every three weeks, give or take a little bit of time here and there, we seem to be getting updates. So it's like no matter what's going on, it's like every three weeks, Mark Rubin is sure to give us an update. So uh, I'm going to read this to you in terms of what he posted on Twitter or X. And you guys can just kind of focus on in on the action. Or you can just focus on listening or whatnot. I'm not gonna not gonna put the text on screen and just have text in your face. You know, you can just focus on the gameplay if you're watching, or you can listen if if you're not watching. But anyway, this is what Mark Rubin had to say about the current state of X Defiant. And I quote: He said, "Hello, all. I wanted to give you all an update on X Defiant. First of all, I can't give you a date yet. I know it's frustrating for some, and I'm sorry." But we want to give a date when we are 100% sure of it. So for now, let me at least tell you what we are working on. So as I mentioned in my last update, we found some frame spikes that were causing issues with how the game felt in our last test. We drove further into that and found that a small part of some anti-cheat software that we were using was causing the issue. We fixed that and are making some extra changes that should improve our netcode efficiency. One of those things is that we are do uh, of things that we are doing is replacing the low-level network transport layer, which should reduce latency and reduce some of the occasional desync players may perceive when another player had bad latency forward slash packet loss. Another area that we are working on is switching all of our servers over to Linux or Linux. Hopefully, I pronounced that properly. And this will help overall server performance, in particular, allowing us to spin up servers significantly faster, which will allow us to handle a larger number of people, uh, excuse me, a larger number of players better, and hopefully will make our launch smoother. And finally, we are also replacing our sh social forward slash party system that we found that it didn't quite live up to expectations when put under the load of actually being live. Our current system works fine in a test environment, but just wasn't cutting it when we tested it live under heavier loads. The new system is being implemented now and should be up and running soon. I know no game is perfect on launch, but we didn't want to just rush the game out. We want to thank everyone for their excitement and participation in all of our pre-launch testing, and I hope that this dedication that we are showing to the game comes across to all of our fans. X Defiant is a game that we want to be loved for many years to come. Hope that adds some clarity to what's been going on with X Defiant. I hope everyone has a great day and keep an eye out for more info. Now, that was what Mark Rubin had to say. So basically, long story short, this is actually going to help with any sort of latency and possibly some, you know, hit detection stuff and resolve some desync issues. Obviously, the frame, the, the, the frame spikes or whatnot or the frame issues has has been fixed and i guess it was due to the anti-cheat system or whatnot so uh so overall good stuff and of course to handle heavier loads at launch is very important which should make it smoother uh at least in theory so when he as i just read that to you it's like yeah this makes absolute sense and when he said that hopefully we'll make our launch smoother i'm like yep so basically this tells me that well I, th even though this is obvious i might as well say it anyway this is like a they're like gearing up for launch. They are continuously gearing up for launch. Uh, again, they were supposed to, or they were originally planning to launch at the end of uh, October, mid to late October, which obviously did not happen. So uh, again, the better the quality of the game is at launch and the better optimized it is, the more smooth it is and everything like that is, for a game like X Defiant means the world because it only has one mode. It only has multiplayer in the form of ranked and in the form of casual. So this is something that they absolutely positively need to get right. And uh, also at, at the same time, I feel like back in the day when multiplayer games were developed to the point to where they weren't getting patched as often as they are now, and especially back in the day when uh, when, when when multiplayer gaming on console was in, was in its infancy, uh, you know, games had to be launched as sharp as possible. And I like the fact that they're taking that quote-unquote old school type of approach because 
quite frankly, in my humble opinion, it shouldn't have that should always be the type of approach that they make when it comes to games. Some developers take it seriously and do it to a T as best they can, and other developers simply do not. As a matter of fact, I will probably say it's not even up to the developers. If anything, the developers obviously would want the game to be released as optimized as possible, but when you get publishers in the way and when you get certain dates in the way, you know, to where publishers want their games released at a certain date, um, you know, there's, you know, the money factor and everything, and they'll just say, well, just just put it out there and we'll fix it later or something like that. So, um, again, this is why you should have, this is why it's a great advantage to have former developers that have now moved into higher positions to, you know, to up the ladder to kind of be in charge because they've been there. So, therefore, they will give the developers the time that they need in order to release the game. You know, like back in the day, Nintendo did this, and I still think that they do to this day, I'm assuming. But, uh, like, I remember specifically... From uh, watching and listening to uh, long retrospective videos about this matter, uh, especially during the time of Mario 64, you know the, the game was delayed for sure. But uh, but again, once you know, once the former developer that went up the higher ladder into the you know into running things, once they saw that what they were trying to do, it's like yeah, they they gave them that develop that extra development time unconditionally, and they delayed the game. And at the end of the day, the game became better for it. Even though, Mar fun fact, Mario 64 was actually supposed to have twice, originally it was supposed to have twice the amount of levels that the game had that, that it released with. But um, but anyway, just a fun little fact here and there. But uh, with that being said, though, um, again, I, like I said, I think every three weeks we're going to continue to get up an update. And I think as time goes on, especially after the release of Call of Duty, I think it's going to be a lot more likely that we are going to get a set release date. The good news is, is that when we do get a release date, um, it's going to be like final. They're not going to want to give us a release date and then all of a sudden be like, yeah, we got a delay or something like that. You know, uh, they never really gave us a, a release date. They gave us an estimation time. So uh, I can pretty much I'm not a gambling man, but I would bet that if they do announce a release date, that it is going to be the final release date. Like that's when the game is going to release no matter what. And I think eventually they're probably just going to have to say, hey, there's always going to be problems. We got to release this thing. You know, we can't be a joke. We can't be the laughing stock of the community. We want to be taken seriously and we've done everything in our power to do so, especially when it comes to transparency and communicating and trying to do what we're trying to do with the game. So, um, so yeah, overall, I take this as a good update, obviously. Uh, obviously that they're updating the servers and all that kind of stuff is great. You know, reducing the desync or eliminating it or... Uh, you know, making everything just oper operate a lot better. And of course, having the, the, the launch a lot smoother because we're on different systems now. We're on, uh, we're eventually going to be on old consoles and then we're obviously on the current gen consoles. And then of course, there's the PC side of things. Now, I'm not a developer, I'm not a techie, but the thing is, I'm sure there's some sort of role that is played when you are uh, under different platforms. You know, there's 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 like another hurdle that you kind of have to overcome when you have this many different platforms that a player can play on to where they can all play at the same time. I mean, that's my assumption. Again, I'm not a developer, but it just makes sense to me. But at the same time, I could be wrong. But uh, but the fact that they're continuing to optimize everything and even improving them and, and upgrading uh, the tech behind it is something that I personally uh, think that is uh, very important for the game. And of course, the anti-cheat. And speaking of anti-cheat, I was going to make a separate video about this, but while I'm here, even though I'm done right now talking about the current update of X Defiant, uh, I do want to specifically touch up on something that I think at least most of you, or if not all of you, would, would certainly be interested in your opinions on this. So I'm just going to spend a couple minutes talking about it. And then after that, uh, you know, the video will be over. But uh, just before I came home to eat, I went to GameStop. I needed a couple of new controllers or whatnot and did my thing. And I spent uh, like at least 10 extra minutes or so talking to the associate who, you know, he knows a lot about tech and all that kind of stuff. We talked games. We were talking about all that shit. And uh, basically he told me, uh, well, we were talking about a cheating issue, you know, the cheating issue with games and stuff like that today. And so the conversation went to the rules in like China or Japan or something like that, or the laws in China or Japan or whatnot. And yes, there has been indeed a player or players that have actually served jail time because they got busted cheating in a game. One person was not from the area. He wasn't a local, but he went to the tournament and he got busted cheating, right? He bought, he brought cheats with him and he got busted cheating. And what they basically did was they deported him. 
And then one other person that I, I asked him then after that, I said, well, has there been anybody that's local that ever got caught cheating? And he said, yes. And to, to his best recollection, the, one dude did six years for cheating. Again, the laws are different over there, you know, uh, either China or Japan. The laws are different over there than they are here. And just before recording this video, after I got done eating, I and, and coming ac uh, across this this update on Twitter or X on X Defiant, um, I also saw a, a video made by Bad Boy Be Beeman uh, that basically talked about how uh, somebody else had made a video talking about how uh, starting November 31st or November 30th or something like that, uh, basically they would be uh, like cheaters in Call of Duty would get up to like three months, I think, of jail time. They got caught cheating. You know, there's the there's the warning first, and then all of a sudden you get caught cheating. Then, then there's that going on. Now we don't know if this is true or not. Bad Boy Beeman himself uh, has scoured the internet to find uh, more information on it. However, uh, there's excuse the excuse the noise. That was my water bottle. Um, uh, however, uh, you know, uh, if it ends up being true, or even if it's not, the question I have for you guys, the viewer, the listener, is. Do you guys think that cheating should be punishable by jail time or something of that nature, right? Or do you think that there should be some sort of step system to where it's like the first time you get popped, you got this. And then, and then you know, maybe there shouldn't be, you know, step one, step two, or step three because there's going to be other ways that people are going to get around it or they say, hey, I got to get a get out of jail free card so I can do it the first time or whatever it is. Um, and, uh, another thing that I've been made aware by this GameStop associate is that I'm sure I basically told him as I was about to leave, I'm like, Hmm, I'm sure there's a hell of a lot less cheaters over there than there are here. And he's, and he's like, Oh yeah. <laughs> so obviously, cause, cause the punishment is severe. I mean, there's one guy got six years, dude. I, I didn't look up any information on this or whatnot. I'm just telling you about what he told me. And then obviously I saw the bad boy Beeman video and I'm like, you know what? I have to, I have to talk about this. And I wanted to include it in this video because the majority of you are here for X Defiant or our Call of Duty or our former Call of Duty players or Call of Duty refugees or some of you he have been in here for a while and you and, and you watch the content that I that I put out. Thank you, by the way, for the amazing support, too, because some of you guys have stuck with me for years. And I'm very appreciative of that. So I want to know your opinion on this. Do you guys think that cheating in a video game in any form, you know, whether it's at a tournament, whether it's in the comfort of your own home or whatever it is, you know, uh, you know, like we're talking cheats, like, you know, anti-cheats and, and I'm sorry, not anti-cheats, uh, like legit cheats, like aim aimbots and stuff like that. People using Cronus. Oh, and speaking of using Cronus and stuff like that, uh, I think he talked about Call of Duty. I don't know if X Defiance can do this, even though I asked Mark Rubin about this, talking about uh, possibly banning, you know, uh, these other things that you can use, like, uh, for instance, like the Cronus, for instance, right? And Mark Rubin said that he was looking into that. But ever since then, I have not gotten an update from him. And um, maybe I'll tweet at him one more time as I get ready to get along, get along with my day and to go to work later on. And uh, speaking of which, I'm actually looking forward to using my new controllers because the stick drift and other problems that it were causing were uh, can obviously be a headache. So uh, it's, it's always exciting when you get a fresh brand new controller. And just an FYI, I am not using a quote unquote special controller. I am just using a standard Xbox controller and a PS5 controller. And, and it's really funny because with a PS5 controller, uh, again, Halo Infinite is quite different than uh, a game like Call of Duty or X Defiant. So in some controller, for some controllers that play better on uh, with one controller and then in a different game that plays completely differently, even though it might be a first person shooter, I will play better with a different controller. So um, plus it's always good to have a backup and I've got a, uh, what's it called? I've got a Brook Super Converter that I can just I can just use a PS5 controller on the Xbox Series X if I wanted to, and uh, I believe vice versa as well. So, um, but anyway, um, with that being said, guys, I want to know what do you guys think the punishment, the legit punishment, should be for cheating? Because cheating is a big deal, and I even told them. I even asked the guy at GameStop. I asked. Uh, I basically asked him. I said, uh, "Can can't these guys can't like these companies?" at like let's say microsoft or whatnot can't they send a, a cease and desist to these cheat makers and he basically said no i don't he didn't uh he didn't we didn't really go into detail about that because i think it uh, it went straight into like because of how the laws are in in like for instance in china compared or japan compared to here so i think that has a lot to do with it or whatnot but it was very interesting in how that subject kind of 
uh, went into this. And I'm like, there's no way I'm not making a video on this. This is not just a coincidence, you know. Uh, so it's like, let's 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 talk about it. And I wanted to include this here. And I know the video is lasting a little bit longer than usually intended, but I thought it was important enough to discuss. And as we know, just like with Call of Duty or X Defiant or any other game today, especially when there's crossplay, cheating is a problem. And even if there wasn't for crossplay, because I'm not just going to point the finger at PC and, and and call out you know the PC community and say, oh, it's because of you guys, you know, the cheating situation is is so bad or whatnot. It's like, well, the thing is, regardless of, you know, whether or not you guys consider that to be true, you guys have to understand that there are things that people can buy literally in stores, including one of these things that I saw at GameStop earlier today that is that that basically gives you, you know, additional aimbot or a rapid fire just by the press of a button or, or or whatever it is. You know what I mean? There are things that you can get, obviously, in Cronus, Zen and stuff like that. I mean, those things, sometimes GameSpot actually, or GameSpot? GameStop actually sells them. And, and and on top of that, there's also Amazon stuff like that. Like it's no it's no longer limited to to, to just PC anymore. Uh, there's more ways to gain an unfair advantage on console now more than there ever has been. And as time goes on, I'm assuming unless there were some strict rules into play, <laughs> kind of like uh, in China or Japan or whatnot, that it's only going to get worse. You know what I mean? So because when he first when the when the associate first asked me how the rules are, I'm like, well. My first answer was that console gaming is not a thing in China or something like that. And he said no, or maybe it once was, but now it isn't anymore or whatnot. I thought it was just PC. But anyway, um, maybe it was just limited to Call of Duty. I don't I don't know. I don't remember the specifics behind that. But that's what I told him. And he basically, you know, we went into a short conversation about this. So, yeah, I wanted to bring you guys in on this. So uh, what are your thoughts? What do you think? Uh, what can we do other than a really, really good anti-cheat, which I hope X Defiant and obviously now that Call of Duty is under Microsoft. Hopefully Microsoft can really put the pedal to the metal on that. I mean, Halo Infinite has cheaters as well. And I'm not an Onyx level and ranked. I'm not really trying to be. Maybe if I really tried, I could. I did in season one. I made it to Onyx. But uh, obviously when you get to Onyx, I think it's I think it's a lot more, a lot worse. Maybe perhaps some of you guys that play Halo Infinite rank can tell me if you're an Onyx level, uh, how the cheating is or how bad the cheating is or whatnot. But it's, it's, it's it, 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 cheating is common now and more common than ever in every single game. All you can do at the very most is try to minimize it as best as you can. So um, so ultimately, what do you guys think? And, and at the same time, do you think that cheating in a video game should be punishable by uh having um you know by actually doing some time or, or having something that will like literally like affect you know life outside of uh the gaming space or whatnot or what what do you guys think i would really love to know your opinions down in the comment section below and at the same time i'm sure there's going to be maybe some people that think that nothing should be done simply because of the fact that um you know that gaming is just gaming and it doesn't you know affect irl or does it? I mean, it kind of just depends on who you are or whatnot. And, and, and the thing is, gaming does affect IRL now, especially since there are people out there that not only create games, but there's people out there that make money from games. So therefore, it's becoming a deeper uh, topic than it originally was. So anyway, I'm sorry for the video being as long as it is, but I'm sure you guys could understand uh, why <laughs> at this point. But anyway... With that being said, thank you all very much for taking the time to watch and or listen. I would love to hear your feedback down below in the comment section. Thank you all very much for the support, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.